Chapter 13 Interior, Boardroom, Day Kutz's version of Bronte is by herself. The fire crackles, a spark of recognition in her eyes. Maria? Interior, Boardroom, Day Kutz is by herself too. She looks around. Cruz, you promised. Well, he died thinking that he'd won. So leave him be, Katia. She looks about herself for the disembodied voice that remains alone. Interior, boardroom, day. Jimi Hendrix, Noel Redding and Mitch Mitchell thump out a slow, charged particle, wordless rendition of Hoochie Coochie Man. Vasily's version of Bronte sits in an armchair by the fire, staring at the Dali mirror above the mantelpiece. Guinness attends. Would Mom be requiring tea while she waits? No. No, thank you. The butler sashays away. She stands. Dali's mirror swells her eyes up to the size of footballs while her mouth looks no bigger than a peanut. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Alexandra. I was attending to... One or two unexpected technical problems. Manny Capra appears from nowhere, his lemon suit so bright that Bronte can't credit how she'd missed his entrance. And a quiff to end all quiffs. She tries to remain focused in spite of his disarming charm. I have something for you, Mr Manny Capra. Do sit back down, and you are a guest in my home. Bronte replaces herself in Manny Capra's leather easy chair, like arms could sprout and coil around her. Manny Capra perches next to Bronte, leaning against his desk, fingers drumming on the mahogany, viewing his catch, cat and canary. He waves away the Jimi Hendrix experience, who obediently vanish. I've got the code you want. Manny Capra cocks an eyebrow, resting his chin between his thumb and forefinger. My associates are not aligned with the aggressive takeover bid being planned by the Doctor's Congress. Manny Capra remains waxwork still, but his eyes betray an easy focus. We believe that this is a frivolous and dangerous act which will only serve to damage both our interests. My associates would like to forge a new understanding, trading our information for your assistance in helping us to rebuild our infrastructure. East of the Caucasus. A wry grin spreads across Manny Capra's tanned face. My God, Vasily Mikhailovich! Katya and Christian are going to be awfully pissed at you. Anya, Misha and Vasily watch her from the side before dissolving into smoke. The wisps trail away and into the fireplace. Bronte is suddenly mesmerised by the intelligent design. The room starts to swell and contract. What is this place? A boulevard of broken dreams? A yellow brick road? The road to Damascus? If you have to ask, you'll never know. So, you were saying? The room returns to normal. Bronte centres herself. (laughs) As an act of good faith, to prove our sincerity, we have a free piece of information for you. Free information? What could be better than free? An employee of your organisation. A little grin colonises Manny Capra's face. I don't understand what is funny. Oh, hang on. Don't say anything. Now, let me guess. Who's been a bad boy then? Grayson Suarez, the deconstructed man. Her mouth hangs open. Well, you didn't think I'd trust someone who tries to cut me in half with his big gun. He's the chief constable. How? Chief constable, my hairy Irish hole. Apsley Moran stands at the front of the table in full Met uniform, grinning like a drunken sailor, fists pumping. Hello, my little lamb. All a bit of spring cleaning. Hail vanity! Poor hardy man. Even the hitman who made it all happen. Tell Vasily it's the thought that counts. Just you wait until I catch up with that conniving little Yankee doodle dandy prick. Not now. Yes, sir. Bronte reaches over and prods Moran. He's solid. And if that means anything in here, Lammy. But yes, I'm real. You have my word on it. 
You have his word on it. Manny Capra gets up and sits at a Steinway grand piano. He trills a few notes. What do you think, Apsley? The best. The best, I. <laughs> best what? The best what? Why does everyone talk in riddles? Manny Capra replaces the lid on the piano and strolls behind her. The best code. I'm real, not code. Yes, you are. What? Real. And code. She runs a palm up to her forehead. Manny Capra leans over the back of her chair. So, as you have seen, we've had a bit of a clear out in the company, and we are looking for new blood. Fresh ideas. Simpkin climbs out of the fireplace, impervious to the heat and soot. He looks like he slept in the suit he's wearing. Shitting hell, you're back. Oh no, you are definitely... How would you like to work in the media, Alexandra? Isn't this just the fucking Mad Hatter's tea party, Lexi? Talk about landing on your feet, you jammy bastard. You know how many would kill to be where you are? I'd, I'd let him splash one all over my face to be where you are. Really not necessary. Simpkin climbs back into the fireplace. I'm serious. Think how much real sex you'll get. Unlimited glory holes on tap. Simpkin winks and climbs back up the chimney. Moran gives him a kick up the backside as he goes, sparks flying. Ow! Twat! Manny Capra massages her shoulders. Vasily watches on. She flings out a hand to him, but he vanishes. So, how about it, tank girl? Before she can formulate an answer, the boardroom disappears. Interior, black space. Replaced immediately by a blackness in which the only light comes from herself. Hard light. Sorry about that. It was all Apsley's idea. He's a weird old swine, but he knows his stuff. Manny Capra is nowhere to be seen. And I'm game for anything. How do you entertain the entertainer, Alexandra? I've been bored for too long, but you, you interest me. You entertain me. You are a story. She claws at thin air. Will you take our deal? None of you really understands what's going on here, do you? And it's so flippin' well simple. Manny Capra pauses for an eternity, leaving Bronte to writhe in her solitude. She can hear her own heartbeat. But I'll humour you. You're worth the time. You're still innocent, and that is what I want. Can you lend me some of your innocence? Can you? I'm serious. Will you take our deal? Manny Capra sits on a golden throne, addressing the blackness. It's lonely up here. I only want one thing. Katya Cuts and Christian Briscoe had conceived a theory about the cloning of adult humans years before even I was born. It just so happened that the populations of bygone eras frowned upon such notions. They were right to do so too. They weren't ready for such a discovery in the 1950s. And they're not ready now. Trust me. Manny Capra's voice is now in her ear. Interior, white space. The black void is replaced by a white void. Her companion has vanished again. You see, when Dr. Briscoe went back into this part of its research, it was only after his success in other aspects of human genetics. Noughts and ones float around the air, followed by other numbers growing in length and complexity. Then designs for biological computers integrating deeper into human biology. A hyperreal montage of the past three centuries playing out before Bronte's stare. Success can make a person blasé, Alexandra. Briscoe and Cuts had stopped looking at the consequences of their actions and went ahead with their grand scheme after several abortive attempts to use their own research as a weapon against me. A touch disdainful. But there you go. They picked you out at random, screened you, and bagged you for their labs. 
Vasily Nedvedev. He engineered the kidnap and Alexandra. He engineered your escape. It was a numbers game, and you were the perfect specimen. A biological weapon on legs. Bronte, in trying her best not to flinch, flinches. Let me talk to you face to face. Manny Capra's disembodied face appears for a second, winks and vanishes. He fooled the Congress into believing that you were dead, so he too could use you as bait for my, uh... Megalomania was the word you were thinking of as you stepped into my home, was it not? Bronte gulps. My thoughts are my own. It has been a long time since that were true for anyone, love. And life was so much more interesting back then. How do you expect me to believe anything you say? I'm rich enough for honesty to be an affordable luxury. Manny Capra appears, sitting on the other side of a chess table. His suit is now a sombre charcoal grey. Not even Vasily Nedvedev Koroskov knows your true value, though, Alex. You see, old Briscoe missed something absolutely crucial about you. Mother Nature provided enough clues as to what would happen if you cloned a person. You've never seen identical siblings. They're bonded by their emotions as well as their kinship. I've watched the relationship between you and her, Alex. You know I've been watching. What are you talking about? Manny Capra shakes his head slowly. Briscoe did more than recreate the human body. He split the human essence. The soul. Manny Capra pauses again, glaring back at her with eyes a wolfish sky blue. Vasily doesn't understand that, Alex. But I do. Maria Schwartz does too. Bronte inhales sharply. A tear rolls down her face. And that, Alexandra, is the most saleable product of all time. More than any facelift, any electronic gizmo, any fancy piece of ass in the entertainment industry, this is true immortality in a bottle. Be in two places at once. More than two. Share the same dimensional plane, the same telepathic experiences. Magic? I don't think so. Science, my darling. And just like Edison, like Jobs, Zuckerberg, Musk, it isn't the scientists who are gifted with the imagination to apply their creations in the market. That job belongs to the visionaries. That's what is exciting. That's what is coming next. That is what you are. And I love it. Manny Capra disappears and is instantly behind her, whispering in her ear. I'll bet you've never even met Maria Schwartz. But you know her, don't you, Alexandra? You know her so well. We did that. Bronte finds herself nodding, unable to stop herself pining for the hallucinations that had not long ago terrified her. Do you realise what I'm offering you, Alexandra? Vasily appears. One day, Diablo will offer you the earth, the moons, the stars. But you will have to go through me. Manny Capra swipes him away and he vaporizes. Bronte shuts her eyes and smiles. Yes, sir. I know very well what you are offering me. Her skin glows a radioactive green hue. Here it is and everything is finally on her shoulders. His breath in her ear. Alexandra, you're the clone. Interior, boardroom, day. Kutzi's version of Bronte stands in the same place as when she entered seconds ago. A light appears back in her eyes. I'm the original. Maria sits by the fire in a lemon suit, identical to Manny Capra's, chuffing on a pipe. The future is... Hail folk. Hail vanity. Hail you. More episodes soon. Subscribe.